Hello. Okay, hello everyone, uh, excellence, ladies, gentlemen, and also young, young uh, friends. Because I saw there are some children also joining us for this session. Uh, welcome all to the uh, Internet Governance Forum 2023 Open Forum number 15, Protecting Children Online with Emerging uh, Technologies. My name is uh, Li Shen Rui. I'm from UNICEF China Country Office as a Child Protection Officer. It's my honor to welcome you uh, as the moderator of this session on behalf of the uh, China Federation of Internet Societies, UNICEF China, and Communication University of China to convey the warm greetings to all of you to gather to this important forum. And uh, uh, there's a big thank you for being here today. And today, in this, for, uh, in this session, we will discuss the, uh, uh, the most trendy topics uh, along protecting children with uh, emerging technologies. As many of you may know that two years ago, uh, the UNICEF released a uh, policy guidance 2.0 on AI for Children globally as a global policy guidance for governance and industry. So the conversations kept going on in the last two years on how to protect uh, children online and how to adjust our policy uh, actions, practices, not only from the government side, but also from the industry and from the social uh, civil society side to engage and leverage resources to protect our children. So taking this opportunity, we have uh, 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 guests and uh, guest speakers uh, with various background and we will share uh, more on their insights around this topic. So without further ado, uh, let's, uh, wo let's welcome our honored guest, uh, Mr. Ren Xianliang, the Secretary General of the World Internet Conference and the President of China Federation of Internet Societies to give us an uh, opening remarks. Please, welcome. Nishman 当然，Ladies，gentlemen，and，friends，it's <音> 同时给互联网治理,特别是儿童网络安全保护,提出了新课题。In today's world, technologies like AI, big data, the Internet of Things are everywhere. They have a huge impact on our lives and raise new issues for Internet governance, especially when it comes to protecting children online. 一方面,网络成为儿童活起知识, 沟通交流的重要渠道。另一方面，网络为儿童成长带来诸多的风险隐患，不良内容、网络沉迷、网络欺诈、个人信息泄露等问题时有发生。On one, on one hand, the internet is an important tool for children to learn and communicate. On the other hand, it brings risks like, like harmful content, addiction, fraud. And the privacy breaches. 加强儿童网络保护已成为国际社会的普遍共识和期待。It's a global consensus that we need to strengthen online protection for children. 相关研究表明，中国青少年网络网民接近两亿，触网的低龄化趋势明显。Studies show that in China alone, there are almost 200 million minors who have access to the Internet. 
The age of the first exposure is getting younger too, with 52% of the minor's internet users before the age of 10. 因此, 中国政府和社会高度重视儿童网络安全的保护工作，发布儿童个人信息网络保护规定，要求网络运营者应设置专门的儿童个人信息保护规则和用用户协议，出台生成式人工智能服务管理暂行办法，从算力平台、算法以及
I recommended that government departments enhance in supervision, continue to take collective measures and crack down on bad online behaviors to strengthen the wall of protection for children's online security. 向上, 向善, Second, we should make sure science and technologies are developed to do good. 网站平台作为各类应用服务的提供者, 要强化主体责任, 建立健全青少年模式, 防沉迷机制, 举报处置机制等, 防范打击侵害儿童合法权益的内容和行为, 鼓励倡导企业加强儿童网络保护的技术研发, 以技术对技术提高儿童网络保护的防疫能力, Websites and platforms as providers of various services should fulfill their obligations. They should establish and enhance features like hit mode, anti-addiction, mechanisms and reporting and removing systems to prevent and combat content and behaviors that compromise children's rights. We should encourage tech companies to invest in research and development for children's online protection. Protecting them technologically against the threats. Third, it's crucial to improve children's digital literacy. Tweeting 以引导规范儿童安全上网用网的能力素养 Schools, families, and society as a whole should work together to raise awareness and educate minors on the, about the Internet. Children should be equipped with knowledge and skills to recognize risk and protect themselves. In addition, schools and parents should be more prepared to guide children through Internet use. 社会组织、科研机构等要整合行业资源和社会力量，研究推进新兴技术伦理治理，构建伦理审查、伦理标准认证等制度机制，形成多方共识儿童安全保护网的良好局面。Social organizations and research institutions should utilize social and industrial resources and work on ethical governance of emerging technologies. This include establishing machines for ethical review and certification. 同时，建议国际社会在相互尊重、相互信任的基础上，加加强对话合作，开展跨地区。跨平台协作、研究破解是儿童的黑会产、隐蔽性网络乱象等难点问题，共同打造有利于儿童健康成长的网络空间命运共同体。Last but not least, I suggest that the internet community strengthen dialogue and cooperation based on mutual respect and trust. We could not tackle difficult issues such as illegal industry targeting children and hidden cyber threats without cooperation across regions and platforms. Together, we can build a community with a shared future in cyber space that fosters the healthy growth of children. We also continue to we will continue to make dedicated efforts towards this goal and contribute a better and a safer cyber world for children. I wish this forum great success. Thank you. Okay, thanks to Mr. Ren for during the opening remarks. It's uh, always real to see that China uh, dedicates to be a pioneer to explore and uh, lead the positive pathways towards a towards an enabling and safe uh, digital environment for children globally, uh, while emphasizing, as Mr. Ren mentioned, the uh, adaptability of laws and regulations, and also the clear roles and responsibilities of different sectors, including industrial and uh, civil society sectors, and also improving the uh, children' digital literacy. 
uh, while we glad to see that China uh, keeps seeing seeking opportunities uh, on international cooperation among this important topic, and uh, we hope to unpack those uh, uh, suggestions uh, later in our discussion today. And next, let's welcome Mr. Uh, Li Zengrui, the Deputy Director of Council of the Communication University of China. Let's welcome. Distinguished Mr. Ren Xianliang, Ms. Dora, ladies and gentlemen, from around, around the world, good afternoon, good evening, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm very pleased to participate in this for open forum with the theme, Protection Children Online with a major uh, technology. First of all, please allow me to represent Communication University of China, or CUC, one of the organizers of this forum to warmly welcome all experts and scholars for your attendance. Thank you for your attention to the topic of children online problem, uh, protection. With the rapid development of the internet, the wave of digital technology and information networking has swept the world. By June 2023, Nathan in China had uh, up to number of one billion, about 20% uh, of which are uh, adolescent and students, taking the largest pr proportion. The popularity of the internet has enabled children more access to reach out uh, emerging technology and further use them. The, the major technology not only bring great convenience to children's education, health, and in entertainment, but also arise people concern for privacy protection and fairness. CUC has always valued to the integration of discipline construction related to internet technology. Technological progress and social responsibility and uh, has deepened academic uh, accumulation in intelligence media network. A number of um, emerging technologies related research center have also been established, including state key laboratory of uh, media convergence and uh, communication, key laboratory of uh, intelligent media of uh, ministry of uh, education, Key laboratory of audio vision, visual technology, and intelligent country system of Ministry of Country, uh, Culture and Tourism. In addition, the School of Information and Communication Engineer has set up AR as a major and the development uh, uh, as a major to cultivate compound senior talent for AI-related scientific research design and development and integrated application in field such as information, culture, cultural, radio, and television and media industry. On the strength of the inherent uh, heritage, academic, and social research and voltage of a, a of amazing internet te technology and the invitation of CFIS and UNICEF, one of scientific research team from UN CUC, joining AI for Children pro Project pro Group. As a key member, our team conducted in-depth research on the application of AI for children and uh, participated in the formulation of a guideline for construction of an internet application for minor based on AI technology. Different from traditional internet application, the internet application driven by emerging technologies introduce intelligent technologies such as machine learning, deep learning, 
natural lang language processing and knowledge graph, the use of this technology help to provide more well-being for children, such as health monitoring of children, recommendation of quality content, content company of special group. However, emerging technology also bring many risks to children, such as unfairness, data privacy, security, data privacy security, and uh, internet education. Therefore, stakeholders such as government department, scientific research institution, social organ uh, organization, and relevant enterprises so the deepen exchange, enhance consensus and strengthen cooperation, and found guidelines and rule of the global common development of protecting children online with emerging technology, so as to promote the health development of emerging technology and better benefit people around the world. I hope that through exchange of this open forum, we can all get inspiration from the application of emerging technology for children and for con contribute to the development and application of emerging technology in the children-related field. At the end, I hope this open forum will be success and promote global awareness of children online protection. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lee, for sharing and also for expressing the commitment uh, of the CUC on generating more evidence on child online protection. It was uh, good cooperation between CUC uh, and uh, UNICEF China on working on the uh, documentation of AI for children cases. Uh, and we definitely hope to see more of those collaboration joint researches between us in future. And the next, uh, please uh, let us welcome Mr. Patrick Burton, the Child Online Protection Consultant, to share about the key considerations in uh, regulating emerging, uh, emerging technologies for protection of children. So the floor is yours, Patrick. Thank you very much. Can I just check that everybody can see my screen? Yeah, sound and clear, please. Perfect, thank you. Sorry, give me a second. I just need to turn translation off because I've got to an echo. Uh, there we go. Hopefully that will be better. So thank you very much, Chairperson, Secretary General, colleagues, fellow speakers, um, experts, participants in the room, friends that I know are there. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you and for um, convening this forum in the first place. So it's difficult to, to watch or to read the news these days, obviously, without hearing about AI, the impact of, of artificial intelligence or digital technology on children's lives. Often, this is phrased in negative terms. For example, the impact of screen time is problematic as that, that, that phrase is, unless it's impact um, on children's concentration and well-being or on the escalating reports of child sexual abuse material or exposure to, to explicit images by children, or sometimes the tragic results of cyberbullying uh, that children are experiencing. And I think this is only surpassed perhaps by the growing attention on the impact of AI and emerging technology specifically, not least in feeding these risks and in exacerbating and catalyzing harmful outcomes for children. Yet, as the title of, of this forum suggests, at the same time, that same technology can certainly offer a wealth of opportunities, many of which have already been alluded to by the previous speakers. In the right context, with the appropriate oversight, regulation and design to mitigate some of the potential for harms that the underlying fra fabric and construction and, and uh, architecture of the algorithms and machine learning introduce or escalate into children's everyday use of digital technology. These range from the use of predictive analytics and behavioral models for prevention 
deterrence and response to cyberbullying, child sexual offending and other risks, and to the use of machine learning and deep neural networks for scanning and hashing of child sexual abuse material. And each of these offers exciting and important guardrails to emerging adaptation of risks that exponentially changing technology and this rapidly changing speed of, of, of technology introduced into children's lives. Now I'll just touch on a couple of examples of how digital technology, of how emerging technology using AI in different, in different forms are being used to keep children safe online. Many of you I'm sure will have heard of some of these. Thorns child sexual abuse material classifier is a machine learning is a machine learning based tool that can find new or unknown child sexual abuse material in both images and videos. When potential CSAM is flagged before review and the moderator confirms the decision, the classifier learns it. Now it continually improves from those decisions and those moderator reviews in a feedback loop. And it's significant in that it uses AI to, as a departure or to generate a departure from existing child sexual abuse material um, mechanisms, which depend on existing reports, existing in databases, existing databases, using hashing and matching technology. And rather, it detects new and unknown or unclassified child sexual abuse materials. That's just one example. Another ex example, which is somewhat different, but, but so important and often overlooked, um, is the use of AI to support children in responding, dealing um, with issues they encounter online. The example I've got here is somebody, a Finnish and Swedish example, which has been developed to support children and adolescents who have, who have potentially experienced online harassment and offers a chatbot through which cases are analyzed and what it calls a first aid kit are offered to children with step-by-step -step guidance on how to deal with each situation on a case-by-case -case basis. Importantly, it also has a mechanism to review by legal experts, ensuring that the safety and the child friendliness of the system is ensured through constant human oversight, something which I touch on again later. The third example that I'd like to give is somewhat different from the previous examples and something which I think we, we are only starting to pay enough attention to, and that's looking at deterrence um, and behavior change for for um, for potential offenders. The redirection programs, and there's a similar initiative out of the UK, uses machine learning to offer self-help programs to prevent child sexual offending, specifically through focusing on deterrence to use child sexual abuse material. It constantly and iteratively learns from information and data shared by users, and importantly, is transparent in the collection and use of this data. Like the previous example, the Somebody initiative, it also subject to oversight and training from human operators. And similar initiatives use predictive analytics to promote behavior change and help seeking amongst online child sexual abuse offenders. Those are just three out of a multitude of examples of how emerging technology is being used, practical examples to keep children safe online. Yet, as much as these technologies in keeping children safe offer immense opportunities, so do these technologies themselves introduce risks to children. They're not necessarily new, new risks, but rather new or exacerbated manifestations of existing risks that digital technologies present in children's lives. And these risks pose important questions for how the tech is designed, how it's regulated, and how it's legislated. For example, a couple of key questions that you need to take into account when thinking about this. What data is used for machine learning? How is it collected? What biases might it introduce into operations? How are these biases mitigated? How is data collected? Where is it stored? Who has access to it, both intentionally and unintentionally? And what's the purpose of that access to the data? Predictive models, machine learning required immense amounts of children's data, the collection of storage, which might introduce new risks into children's lives, might introduce new privacy and security risks for children. There are a number of ethical dilemmas around this. To what degrees are approaches such as predictive analytics and nudge techniques when applied using AI, allowing for the personal freedom of choice, the autonomy of decision-making rather than manipulating users. 
particularly if those users, those children are not aware of the facts or fully understand the facts, how that technology is being used, how their data is being used, um, or how an intervention is being applied. And somewhat related to this is the ring fencing of data that is collected and used to inform these models um, for purposes of, of the minimization of purpose and use. And um, now just, I think um, the moderator introduced or made reference to a couple of documents that UNICEF has produced, both the, the model legislation and policy um, for AI and also uh, UNICEF and Ocenti have produced a number of papers that highlight some of these challenges. Just to carry on, risks to children's autonomy of consent, technology deployed to detect new child sexual abuse material or grooming, for example, using classifiers such as those provided in the example before, would not necessarily be able to differentiate between consen consensual sexual conversations or image sharing between two adolescents of a legal age in that jurisdiction on the one hand, and otherwise unknown and unhashed child sexual abuse material, potentially introducing risks and biases to those children. Related to this, what are the underlying assumptions that underpin those algorithms or the machine learning or what is age appropriate, contextually appropriate, um, culturally appropriate consensual behavior? And how are those different those differences by by context, by region, by location taken into account. What are the lack of, well, what about the lack of accountability, transparency and explainability of machine learning systems are making decisions related to data and algorithmic determination? How and when are these decisions and explained to children in a way that they understand or to their parents as well? And do they detract from individual decision-making? There are many more perceptual hash hashing, potential for false positives, um, some of these risks are more applicable to some forms of emerging technology than others, and in particular uses compared to others, but most are, some in, are common to some degree across the different forms of technology that use machine learning and deep learning. So I don't have five days, so I'm just going to draw attention to some of the key issues around regulation and particularly around addressing some of these challenges that the use of, of emerging technologies pose. I say I don't have five days because this is a challenge that countries throughout the world and regions throughout the world are battling with. And I think while we have some really good promising examples and some good examples relating to some of the ch challenges in legislation, it is an evolving conversation and something where I think um, you know it's going to take us a while to get this 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 framing and the regulatory and policy environment really um, sound in order to protect the collective rights of children. And I'm starting with the protective rights of children because underlying any legislational policy has to be an assurance that all technology and regulation are rooted in the mandate to protect and ensure the collective, equal, indivisible, and inseparable rights of children rather than prioritizing one right over the other. That means anticipating many of the potential unintended consequences that that technology might have down the road on children's rights, collective rights. It ranges from the obligations of due diligence by industry, designing and implementing that technology to anticipate and address adverse effects on the rights of the child, to the responsibility of states to ensure that businesses adopt and adhere to these principles and are held accountable. And also to ensuring that states themselves respect and adhere to these principles and its mandates. Now, these are enshrined in the Convention on the Rights of the Child. It's, they're, con they're enshrined or they are certainly contained in the General Comment number 25 and emerging sort of global guidance and tre treaties and instruments that have been designed to look at the protection of children's rights. And a couple of, of more recent um, legis uh, pieces of legislation and policy fr frameworks are starting to incorporate these effectively. And the Australian Online Safety Act, the UK Online Safety Bills, which is addressing this to some degree, and I say to some degree. Um, the EU dig um, uh, DSA and the recent draft direct regulations ex that explicitly 
address the need to anticipate and detect online harms before they occur. Um, I mean, what's interesting, the, the recent EU directive calls for relevant judicial bodies to ensure that technology companies objectively and diligently assess, identify, and weigh on a case-by-case -case basis, which is critical, not only the likelihood and serious of the potential consequences of services being misused for the types of online child sexual abuse at issue, but also the likelihood and seriousness of any potential negative consequences for other parties affected. One of the things I don't have on the sl slide here that is also critical that is contained in EU legislation as well as Australian legislation, at least I'm sure it's in others, require the importance of requiring third party independent and public annual audits to assess the impact on child rights as detailed in the CRC and general comment number 25. Moving on, some more examples. If age verification is to be adopted, and most recent pieces of legislation are pointing to, to that, contained in various EU documents, contained in the draft UK online safety bill, in EU led in, in Australia legislation, if age verification is to be adopted. And I'm saying if because you know we can't say that age verification is perfect yet. It is not where it should be in order to, to function effectively. It is very likely to get there. Then significant steps will need to be taken prior to its implementation to ensure that the child population is equitably equipped with required identification or whatever is required in order to be able to verify the age and that certain populations are not excluded from that. So we need to make sure that age verifications do not reinforce existing biases or introduce new biases or exclusionary practices. Okay, Patrick, sorry to interrupt. To make uh, I have to interrupt you, but uh, we are running out of time. So probably you could wrap up within one minute, please. I will wrap up, with, I will wrap up within one minute. Um, <laughs> I've already spoken, <laughs> almost there. I've already spoken about AI o oversight bodies. Um, importantly, with attached mechanisms for re redress. And that's just something I've got to say. We know from speaking to children throughout the world, one of their major concerns is that when they make reports or when, when AI is used or when automated report systems are used, there's no response. We need to make sure there's accountability for those responses. Um, and then we need to make sure that regulation is designed in a way or policies are designed in a way that are not limited to existing emerging technologies that are provide, but rather provide scope for future developments and definitions. The very last point I'd like to make, this is a quote from a recent paper by Amanda Leonard and colleague Owens um, on common myths and evidence. And she makes a point that sometimes some technology cannot be fixed by more design. We cannot necessarily design our way out of, out, out of problems um, sometimes those technologies should not be built at all. And I guess my final comment is, do we and can we and will we rely on emerging technologies and AI to fix the problems that often result from AI in the first place? Do we rely on AI to create the internet that we want? And that's perhaps a question more than an answer. Thank you and apologies for going over time. Okay, thank you, Patrick, uh, for your thoughtful sharing. And uh, we all know that it's never an easy question to answer. Uh, on this topic, and we are all devoting to find the fine balance uh, between the trade off and against uh, on child online protection. We definitely want to hear you, uh, hear from you more in future. But next, uh, let's welcome Professor Sun Yi from Kobe Institute of Computing, Graduate School of Information Technology, to share uh, his thoughts on this topic. Please. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the UNICEF China and uh, CFS and CFC give me the opportunity to share my experience and here. My name is Yusun. I'm Chinese, but I live in Japan more than 20 years. I'm now I'm an associate professor of graduate school in information technology at the Kobe Institute of Computing. Uh, today I want to share some of my personal experience of the internet safety uh, technology for children uh, in Japan. Next slide, okay. And uh, yes, and first I want to share the internet use rate of youngs in Japan. Uh, about the action rates internet use by Japanese youngs, we find the date uh, published by Cabinet Office Governments of Japan uh, in 2022. Uh, in this date, 98.5 percentage uh, of the young people response they are using the, the internet. The most used device is smartphone. 
and uh, there's a high rate. You can see the, 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 the graph in the right. There is a high rate of internet use starting in the elementary school. Yes, and my daughter is an elementary school the first year. They also have a smartphone. <laughs> Okay, uh, in the digital age, ensure the safety of the children as online is a um, paramount concern. In Japan, a constant efforts are underway to address this issue. For the government side, the Ministry of in Internal Affairs and Communications runs a program called Information Security Site for the citizens. They have the kids' version um, to the educating the children on safety internet practice. And uh, for the MPO uh, initiative, the MPO Information so uh, Security for, uh, Forum uh, co hosts the Internet Safety Education Program uh, with the uh, local authorization and the organizations, extending the reach of the Internet Safety Education to various uh, communities. Uh, this effort helps make the Internet safe for our kids, uh, lets them enjoy its benefit. Uh, will uh, protecting them from its dangers. Uh, from the uh, te uh, technology side, uh, values of technology are also offered. Fuel test technology stands as a popular measure in safety guarding students' internet use. It's developed well with smartphones application uh, or set in the internet uh, network device at the school and the homes. And some network service provider also uh, provide the service. Uh, moreover, uh, smartphones, parents' controls help limit the use time and accessible uh, application. However, there are big challenges. When use filter, it is important to keep the filter applications database always up to date in order to provide the most effective uh, production. And uh, yes, moreover, if you are using a network site filter, it's very simple to change a uh, switch to another network will uh, disable the filter. Uh, for a parent rules controls, made in fine, even for me, and it's, it's the setup of the controls on uh, smartphone, it's very complicated. And the often the parents cannot to configure it uh, correctly. And believe me, the kids is very uh, smarter than we image. They always can find the way to disable the uh, the parents' controls. More than one I heard from some young boys proud to tell me is how he's removed the restriction on his uh, school's PC. <laughs> okay, next slide. Uh, use big data and AI technology to protect students' safe uh, use of internet is a new uh, technology trend. Uh, some uh, the AIST, the National Institute of uh, Research uh, in Institute, uh, provides a real time AI analyze for children, abuse risk assignment, and support this making. Use this system, uh, yes, they can provide uh, the safe rate of abuse, a potential recurrent rate to keep uh, help the kids. Okay, the next slide. Oh, this one is okay. Uh, oh, sorry. The okay. So and uh, at the same time, another research in our research group is working on a various study uh, about the e-learning. Uh, so the open source uh, learning management system, we collect all the activity students uh, while they are interacted with the system, all the click and uh, what they watched, how many, uh, how long they watched some page. All the data collected to uh, utilize to patronize the students' learning behaviors enables real-time uh, personalized feedback, significant improving the learning experience. Uh, interestingly, we've developed, uh, we also developed a method to identify students uh, why they struggle with the learning. Upon the investigation, we discovered that the struggle is often not with the learning materials, but distractions like TikTok or uh, online game. Next slide, please. So our research group is working, oh, sorry. And uh, so we realize that is some support system, the same support system can be uh, help ensure kids use internet safety. 
Simple extending our country system could let us check if kids are using their internet safety without need the external setup. It's more easy to use. And but the challenge is uh, many school uh, use the uh, learning platform like Google and uh, Microsoft. Uh, these platforms were easy to create the learning materials, but even you haven't IT skill, but they don't let us to connect the detailed date and how uh, the students use it. So if we want to uh, track the internet use of the insurance safety, uh, team up with uh, the big uh, platform providers were very important, uh, very important. In addition, there are many issues related to personal privacy when you state. Uh, there's a trend off between protecting privacy and improving the date available, uh, which will be a big challenge. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sun, for sharing this uh, interesting project. And uh, it's always good to know that uh, how to employ something we ha have already have to inform our practices. Next, please uh, join us to welcome uh, Ms. Wang Meng Yin. Uh, Senior Director of Culture and Content Division of Tencent to share with us. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor on behalf of Tencent to be part of the discussion on how to use the emerging technologies to keep uh, children safe online. As we are all aware, emerging digital technologies such as AI and uh, large language models uh, and uh, rapid development and uh, enables internet uh, applications to scale and uh, suspend, uh, uh, expand uh, substantially, offering children a much richer digital world uh, to uh, for learning, uh, living, and uh, social networking, but also making them more prone to harms and uh, risks. There are nearly 200 million underage netizens in China, uh, with the internet adoption rate among underage population reaching almost 100%. Children now assess the internet as younger ages, with an evident uh, rural and uh, urban information gap, as well as a lack of uh, uh, risk awareness going online, uh, given the large number and the very digital literacy levels of the minors. Safety and the development uh, uh, are always at the top of the agenda to protect their rights and interests in the digital world. Just uh, now, Professor Sun Yi shared with us his research and uh, uh, source on the uh, children pro uh, online protection in Japan, which is uh, tremendously enlightening. Uh, and now I'm going to offer an industrial perspective on how the miners could benefit uh, from learning and utilizing these emerging technologies. Uh, Tencent firmly committed to the mission and the vision, uh, which is uh, uh, value for users and tech for good. Actually, we uh, actively explore and improve our online safety solutions for miners, making full use of the company's experience in information and digital technologies, and also mobilizing resources in societies at large. Uh, please allow me to share a few things that Tencent is working on at this moment. For status, uh, we bring together quality contents and uh, provide average netizens with access to use the internet positively. In 2019, Tencent kicked off the T mode in a handful of its products, uh, consolidating high uh, quality content suitable for the young users as their online guardians. And in, uh, in 2021, Tencent joined hands with the China Song Qingling Foundation in the initiative of the master class for youngs, which top class scientists, experts, and educators were invited to teach our young audience their lesson one in various areas. Uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist Professor Yang Jinning, uh, Mr. Chi Fairin, chief designer of China's Shenzhou spacecraft, uh, and also Mr. Shen Jixiang, president of the Chinese Society of Cultural Relics. The master classes were then turned into featured video uh, lectures in 4K resolutions for circulation in the hope that these great materials can truly benefit more children, offer fascinating learning content, and uh, inspire their future professional persuade. Uh, secondly, Tencent provides professional education and help build a competent system for minors to utilize the internet and AI. 
growing up uh, in a digital age, today's young, um, young people uh, need to keep a finger on the pulse of the emerging technologies uh, so as to prepare for the future. On September the 1st uh, this year, uh, Tencent released uh, AI and Programming Lesson 1, a pro bono project offering young users a free introductory course at home on AI and programming through a lightweight package on WeChat. Notably, for schools in rural areas with limited uh, teaching resources and equipment, we also, our course can also take a place in a um, uh, computer-free mode, allowing students uh, to, uh, uh, to, to learn AI as their urban counterparts do, through, uh, such as uh, role-playing. This program debuted at uh, already 21 pilot set in 14 uh, primary schools um, in around uh, uh, four cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Shenzhen, and uh, uh, Guangzhou. Uh, most uh, students found it uh, kept waiting to let the machine identify objects uh, uh, through simple labeling, and many teachers said it was very important to build up children's creative mindset through such programs, enable them to spot potential questions and also try to troubleshoot uh, using uh, kind of like uh, contributing thinking. Certainly, as an advocate for scientific thinking, Tencent strives to guide the miners to understand the internet and their own development in a positive manner. Curiosity of the young mind is very much treasured. They need diversified channels to explore the real world and the proper education to experience the pervasive world beyond the screens. Starting from uh, uh, 2019, Tencent and uh, Tsinghua University uh, jointly carried out an annual popular science event named Tencent Young Science Fire. More than 2,000 young, uh, young science enthusiasts enthusiasts met face to face with a top international audience uh, scientists at the fair and 40 million online views were impressed by the charms of the science. More and more youngsters in China now are taking scientists as new model and uh, new adults and also scientific uh, uh, explorations uh, is becoming a new fashion. Helping the manners growing up healthily is a, a vision shared by the international community. In 2022, Tencent uh, teamed up with a number of companies and organizations to com compel uh, and uh, release the guidelines for construction and uh, um, internet applications for miners based on AI technology, building, uh, bringing the synergies of the industry to promote uh, online safety uh, for children while developing digital technologies. Tencent is also exploring AI uh, uh, technology to improve the growing environment for miners. For example, the Israel Action Initiative by Tencent in 2020 uh, offered uh, charity groups and the um, equipment manufacturers uh, the Israel audio technology for free uh, for improving by improving user experience for the, those with uh, cochlear, uh, cochlear implants, including the children. Children is the future and the hope of the mankind, and the minus protection is by all means uh, a common cause, as wonderful and uh, daunting as it is. I'm pleased to share with you that in September, the AI program lesson one was rolled out uh, uh, in primary schools around, all around the country. So in the seas of AI and the, in the hearts of the many children in rural areas. The master classes for youngs now total 139 episodes, already reached 10 million young people with more than 100 million views so far. and. Um, at last, uh, Tencent is looking forward to join hands with you all and uh, to build uh, in building a clean internet and a safe digital world for our children. Thank you for all. Okay, thank you, Meng Yin, for sharing good practices from Tencent. And uh, last but not least, to conclude this session, let's welcome Ms. Dora Drusty, the Chief Child Protection of UNICEF China Country Office, to deliver the closing remarks. Please, welcome. Yes. 
Is it working? Yeah. Distinguished experts and participants, uh, as we bring this forum to a closure, allow me to thank you for your insightful ideas and also for the participation in this important forum on emerging technologies and child online protection. We live in an era uh, driven by technologies such as artificial intelligence, blockchain, newer technologies that are poised to reshape our society. Globally, a child goes online for the first time every half a second. One in three internet users are children. We've heard today how this has positive uh, connotations and impact in terms of learning and accessing information. But we've also heard that there are potential risks. Children may be exposed uh, to harms uh, like illegal content, privacy breaches, cyberbullying, and most seriously, sexual abuse and ex exploitation through the use of technology. In 2022, the US-based National Center for Missing and Exploited Children received 32 million reports from around the world of suspected child sexual exploitation and abuse cases, an increase by 9% from 2021. Europol identified that the increase had been going on year by year, but during COVID, due to increased activity related to the lockdowns, this increase, this rise, uh, was particularly significant. As today we talked about emerging technologies, uh, we need to consider that the use of immersive digital spaces, which are virtual environments that create a sense of presence or immersion for users, and are facilitated by AI, may expose children to environments that are not designed for them amplifying the risks of sexual grooming and exploitation, for instance, through the use by potential abusers of virtual rooms or personas that groom them. As technology evolves, immersive digital spaces will become more widespread in all fields and therefore the risk will also increase. We need therefore to understand in depth the implications and impact of the risks of children for children. On a positive note, we've heard today how AI technologies can offer help to address child sexual exploitation and abuse online. Uh, for instance, there exists an array of techniques based on AI that can be designed to detect different elements of the spectrum of illegal materials, behaviors, and practices linked to child sexual exploitation and abuse online. In addition to identifying preventing abuse, AI can also be used to support children who have experienced abuse, as we saw in Patrick's presentation. While, while all this is positive for prevention, detection, and investigation of cases of child sexual abuse and exploitation online, the use of AI may also impact data protection, safeguards, and users' privacy. Therefore, Protecting child rights in the digital war and ensuring safety relies on striking a balance between the right to protection from harm as well as, 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 well as to privacy. This is one of the guiding principles of the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child General Common Number 25 on children's rights in relation to the digital environment. This document has provided us with uh, important principles to address the issues of child rights in a rapidly changing technology environment. With the objective of preventing risks from becoming harms and to ensure children's rights to be informed and at the same time become digital citizens. We know much more today than a decade ago. We heard today echoing also um, the Secretary General's words, Patrick's and all the other speakers, that we need to cooperate. We need to work together. We need to look at different dimensions. We need to coordinate efforts at the legal and policy level, criminal justice, victim support, society and culture, uh, the technology industry, investing in research and data. 
Before I conclude, allow me to emphasize some key actions to ensure that we have a safe digital environment for children, echoing also the words of the Secretary General and other speakers. First of all, we need to enhance our understanding on child safety within this involving landscape. Increase evidence generation on trends, patterns, and risks for children to be engaged in this evolving digital environment, but also to bring forward solutions that are effective. Secondly, we need to strengthen and develop laws, policies, and standards that can evolve as rapidly as the changing environment, and that can also assess the critical benefits and risks. We need harmonization of these legislation and standards across the globe because this is a global, global problem. And we need to involve experts from dis different disciplines. Third, we need tech companies to embrace responsible design principles and standards, prioritizing safety, privacy, and inclusion of child users and conducting frequently child rights reviews for their products and services. And we've heard a few examples during this forum. Fourth, we need to continue raising awareness on safety and digital literacy for children, parents, caregivers, society as a whole. We rally for a collective action by governments, private sector, civil society organization, international organization, academia, families and children themselves. Together, we must ensure emerging technologies create a safer, more accessible digital world for children. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dora, for the uh, very comprehensive and encouraging closing remarks. Uh, it's, uh, the as you mentioned, they're all essential building blocks for a uh, for enabling and safe envir digital environment for our children. And we hope today's session have brought some enlightening insights to all of you. And uh, thank you for your attention and participation. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing you in our uh, session next year at uh, IGF 2024. Okay, thank you all.